Hello, welcome to the Academy. And um, as Carolina already said, my name is Karen Lasswan, and I am the project lead for the model project Smart Cities at the Berlin Senate Chancellery. Um, since September 2020, Berlin can call itself a model project Smart City. The Federal Ministry of the Interior, Building and Community started this program in 2019. And due to the success in 2020, Berlin receives now a funding of 17.5 million euros from 2020 to 26. The funding period is divided into two phases. We're now in phase A, which will last two years with the goal of creating a new smart city strategy for Berlin. Phase B, which starts next year, will last five years with the aim of successfully realizing five individual pilot projects that will be closely linked to the smart city strategy. The smart city strategy is written in a new way, especially for public service and for politicians. We participate the people of Berlin and ask them, and also you, about the ideas for the smart city of Berlin. This comprehensive participatory process includes the different stakeholder groups in Berlin, as there are political actors in public administration, businesses and startups, research and education, organized civil society, and the so-called silent groups. An exchange of opinions, a look over the German borders, are important sources of inspiration for the whole process. And that's why I'm very glad to participate in the session today. Um, I would warmly welcome Thomas Stelmer, which is uh, the founder of the office TSPA, an urban planning and architecture office, Geraldine de Bastion, the co-founder of Connective and founder of Global Innovation Gathering, and Rocio Amias, which has a background in gender and social innovation in cities and climate, and uh, having worked both at the UN and at the EU. Thanks, Caroline, for giving us the chance to discuss our topics in your academy. And thank you all for joining us and sharing your ideas. Um, so uh, what are we doing today? Uh, we wanted to um, have a workshop with you. So you will actually have to work. It's not that we're telling you a, a lot of stories. No, we are uh, going hands on about uh, future, uh, future scenarios and future tools uh, and processes that we can use for city making. Um, but before we explain you what you're gonna do, we wanted to show you um, a couple of examples, very shortly from around the world that we were either personally involved in or that we discovered and find um, uh, leading to see, to inspire you, uh, to use that later and continue that uh, chain of thought in our workshop. So um, one example that, would, that I would like to show is uh, one that uh, uh, my colleagues at UN Habitat in Nairobi developed uh, together with Mo Young, which is the company that makes Minecraft. It's a computer game. Uh, I hope everybody knows it. If not, probably your kids, if you have them, uh, had an obsessive phase about it. It's a three-dimensional world that you can explore and everything is made of uh, like one by one meter uh, cubes. So the interesting idea uh, of this initiative is to design public spaces using the Minecraft interface. So in this collaboration, uh, as you can see here on these two pictures, uh, the initiative goes to public spaces, often in the uh, southern hemisphere, in emerging or rapidly developing countries, and tries to map out to build that space in Minecraft. Of course, that's very rough, uh, to then later use that as a participation tool. And I have to admit, I myself, I'm an uh, urban designer and architect. So when I first uh, heard of it, I, I, I scoffed a bit and thought, well, you need a professional to design a public space properly. But this is not what it is about. Uh, what is amazing about it is that it enables um, citizens, enables uh, neighbors who usually are not part of these urban design processes and are not even the kind of person who would go to a public hearing because even that, as we all know, is quite a special type of person. But everybody, especially the youth, to think about the city and to co-produce rapidly ideas for the public space. 
And then uh, in a later step, um, still uh, there's need for professionals that take on these ideas, translate them into designs. And it has been successfully used to design uh, public spaces all about all around the world. On the left, you see a picture from a workshop in Mexico City. On the right, an implemented project in uh, Mumbai in India. And uh, I find that very inspiring and beautiful because it links the ideas of broad participation of digital tools of use and links it directly with the real built world. Um, but maybe to the second case study, Rocio, what can you tell us about uh, Porto Alegre? So participatory budgeting, which many, if not all of you are familiar with, um, arose about 35, 30 years ago. And it started in the city of Porto Alegre in Brazil. And this was a city that was growing absolutely rapidly and was, um, was confronted with the problem of informal settlements around the outskirts of the rapidly growing city. And at the time, the mayor decided, well, we're gonna come in with a totally different type of financing and participation. And he started participatory budgeting. The way this story goes is that actually the city has stopped the participatory budgeting process, but it has been implanted around the world as a very successful process for smaller scale engagement and rapid changes to bringing um, equality into cities and definitely bringing in varied forms of participation, whether you're talking about women's groups, or you're talking about youth groups or people living in poverty. It also was a very interesting example to come out of Porto Alegre because there was nothing like this um, in the uh, in, in, the pub, in the public administration at the time. The way money and was dispensed was very much still following the, the rules of the early 20th century and 19th century that had been established in Brazil. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, that, yeah. Now we're moving on to something where this actually, our next example is partially randomized procedure, which was brought in by Volkswagen Stiftung. This is not a city example. But the reason we brought it in is because we thought perhaps with some of the conversations that you will have in your groups, you might want to use a um, translate from other um, parts of other knowledge that you might have that isn't necessarily or obviously linked to city administration. So Volkswagen Stiftung has done something very interesting where they've decided to dispense their research funds in quite a different way. They it's not necessarily, it's no longer merit-based in so far as it, the peer review process. It actually is now a mixture of the two where they bring in a peer review process and then it actually goes to a, a lottery system. And this kind of comes out of the a reaction within the, the STEM, within STEM researchers where they were saying, well, either way, it's a lot of this is, is like a lottery for us when we apply. And actually what ends up happening is we spend the same amount of time we would do actually doing our research, applying for it. And so this, this um, procedure was, is quite new. It was established in 2018, and I believe they've done two rounds of financing for research up until now. Um, I, I had... Sorry, I think the fellow yeah. architects and urban planners here, as well as the fellow researchers, um, can can feel that very much that we use <laughs> much of our time in applying for grants uh, rather than in actually doing the work. And we were wondering, mm -hmm. can we not find a way to also, in a broader sense, enable more citizens to actually contribute rather than fight for the spot for contribution? No. Mm -hmm. And actually into the chat, I will drop down, I will drop the, the process that they follow um, in order to do this. And Thank I pass you. over to Geraldine. Thank you so much, Rocio. So I'm gonna share with you an example of a friend and colleague of mine that was shared in the context of a workshop we recently did, which Karen Lassen was also a part of. I've already shared the link in the chat where you can watch both of the presentations being held. One wonderful presentation by Karen explaining the participatory manner of our smart city planning process for our new smart city strategy here in Berlin. And the other one held by William Senyu, who is the founder of the Impact Hub in Accra. And so the example I am sharing is one of 
bottom-up smart city governance, I would say, or attempts to create bottom-up structures for smart city governance and smart city projects. So the Impact Hub Accra, maybe you're familiar with Impact Hubs, is, uh, is a space for social entrepreneurship. And they are in an area of Accra called Osu, which is a very sort of bustling um, urban area full of shops, but also residential areas. So really a kind of mixed urban area. And around the corner from this impact hub building is a place that looks pretty much exactly like the slide that Thomas showed you in the beginning with the space in Nairobi. So it's a place called Ako Ajay Park in Osu, but it's really um, just an empty piece of dirt <laughs> and doesn't match look like a park in European standards. Um, many tourists in Accra, including myself, have made the mistake of Googling and seeing, oh, there's a park and walking there and being like, oops, what is this? So Will had the vision, what if he, because of what they created with Impact Hub and already having one model building that is sort of a visionary building in the area, what if they started developing the whole area around them, but really taking along all the small shop owners, or the people who live there as a collective endeavor, as a bottom-up planning process to turn this area into a model smart city for the city of Accra. So they basically spent a lot of time lobbying the government through different tactics and measures, which he explains very nicely in the video um, with a link I shared, and um, got the city of Accra to agree to basically vamp up this 20,000 square meter area um, so this park area with the buildings around it to this model smart city project to be solar powered and at the moment and, and, and not just equipped with renewable energies, but um, made smart in the sense that the, the, the people living in that area would also be involved in a new way in the planning of, um, of the restructuring of it. So they're in the middle of this process, basically setting up what they would usually do as Impact Hub, a bunch of um, open calls and tenders for different startups and different actors to bring in innovative ideas for the area and from the area and setting up different kind of public-private partnerships together with the city of Accra to implement this Mark Ako Ajay Park area. And I highly invite you to check out their work and where they're at. It's a very exciting process and I think I've used up my time, so I'll stop there. Thank you so much, Jared.